Yeah. Got it. So, okay. So, how how many people have read to to the end of I Am Malala? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Nearly everybody. Okay. And so last week we'd got to page 132, I think, hadn't we? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it, I'm just going to look at where we are in the book. So that's a place called Birmingham. So she, oh, that's right. So that's a good point. She wakes up in hospital in Birmingham at this point, um, completely confused as to where she is because she's pretty much blacked out, hasn't she, for the last few, I don't know, days or weeks. Yeah. So what did we think to the rest of the book that we've read now? I think she's a very courageous young lady. Hmm. Our whole family were courageous. Incredibly, because she doesn't, she, she sort of controls her emotions, doesn't she? And doesn't show her emotions to her dad when she's worried because she doesn't no. want to worry him. I absolutely love what she says in her, ep uh, not the epilogue, it, when she, the speech she gives to the, um, right you know, at the end, the, the speech she gives to the, um, oh, was it the EU? The United Nations. United Nations. Mm -hmm. That speech she gives is so powerful, and there's one sentence in there that actually, um, what is it? She, it I'm trying to find it now. I, I, I was going to say, which page is it on? Yeah, it's on page. Know. It's on page one nine five one nine six. Okay. It goes over. Um, Do you want to read it out, Tracy? Yeah. Oh, so give me, good luck. Okay, here we go. It says, "Dear brothers and sisters, do you remember one thing? Malala Day is not just my day. Today is the day." for every woman, every boy and every girl who has who have raised their voices for their rights. Thousands of people have been killed by the terrorists and millions have been injured. I am just one of them. So, I, so here I stand, one girl amongst many. I speak not for myself, but for all girls and boys. I raise up my voice, not so that I can shout, but so that they, those without a voice can be heard. Those who have fought for their rights the rights to live in peace, the rights to be treated with dignity, the rights to equal opportunity, the rights to an education. On the 9th of October 2012, the Taliban shot me on the left side of my forehead. They shot my friends too. They thought that the bullet would silence us, but they failed. And then out of the silence came thousands of voices. Parents <coughs> thought that they would change our aim and stop our adversions but nothing changed in my life except this weakness fear and hopelessness died strength power and courage was born i am the same muala i am ambition at the same um my hopes are the same my dreams are the same one child one teacher one pen one book book can um can change the world that is just so powerful from a young girl yeah Mm. absolutely powerful beyond words that is i got choked up when i read that last night because that was really powerful yes very courageous very mm. it's very inspirational to young people isn't it to think if you think you're in that kind of position and she mm. she just kind of did it didn't she just promoted yeah. the education of girls and the exposed what was happening didn't she she did and she just i mean i suppose i know she's still doing it as of today she's still fighting for children's young ladies rights now isn't it but also schools yeah as well. um yeah but i mean she, what she went through and that and to be separated from her family and for her to worry about who was going to pay for everything when she woke up mm. you know, she, who was going to pay for her care who was going to pay for her family where was her family nobody would tell her anything which was a bit of a shame well um, she didn't even know whether they were alive did she no, she did true yeah. that must have been terrifying Mm. Apart from the fact you're up to move to another country where you don't know anybody or any anything. Fortunately, she spoke English. But she must have been absolutely petrified. But she kind of rises above it all the time, doesn't she? It's amazing, like you said, Tracy. Mm. Even when the bit where she didn't, she asked the nurse for a mirror in the hospital. Oh. Yeah. And and she wasn't, she she had to face the fact that, you know, her face had been really damaged, hadn't it? But she was just glad to be alive and she just explored it as though it was a kind of, as though she was slightly removed, I thought. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
What's that, Alison? It was as if she'd pulled into a shell to protect herself. Mm. But she was she was objective rather than subjective, if you know what I mean. Mm. So it, it's happened and I've got to get over it. Yeah, she couldn't write, she couldn't, you know, just imagine waking up when you are normally, you've got, you can um, move your head. But every time she moved her head, it felt like her head was going about to explode. And mm. to have tinnitus, which is what she, what she, it sounded like she'd got, and all that ringingness, and all she could hear was muffled noises, and she seemed double. It must have been so scary for her, mm. um, for anybody, but for a child to go through that must have been absolutely horrendous. And then, as you say, to wake up in a foreign country where, oh, sorry, my silly dog, uh, where she doesn't know anybody, but the, and then she said, I mean, it, she said something about a teddy bear. She swore blind the teddy bear was a different colour. Yeah, yeah, it was green. Green. yeah. yeah. and uh, it wasn't, was it? It was it was always white, but she uh, swore it was green. I yeah, wasn't that bad. Was I don't get that bit myself, but well she couldn't that's because she wasn't seeing colours properly. Oh, okay. What were you gonna say, Karen? Yeah, because I was gonna say because of her, her brain had been affected, um, you know, the trauma she'd had, um the sort of nerves weren't um coming through right. But uh, I thought it was very poignant when uh, she got to speak to her father on the phone for the first time. And she'd been told not to cry. Yeah. <laughs> and they'd been told the same. Yeah. 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 And I thought that was really hard. And of course, when her parents finally arrived, she was allowed to let everything out, you know. <laughs> Uh, yes, I thought the, the, the comments you made was people don't understand when I say this. I suppose unless you've been to death, close to death, you cannot. But death and I have been very close, and death, it seems, didn't want me. Mm. Which struck me as something that, you know, very grown up um, concept yeah. for a little girl. Yeah. Uh, and how grateful she was to the um, doctors. They told her later on what had happened. Um, they the, 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 the doctors, they yeah, their doctors had already been in Pakistan, mm. and they they got her home, and they were instrumental in, in saving her life because where she was, she wasn't getting wasn't able to have the best treatment yeah i thought the way they said you know when the other two girls were shot i thought they were brought over here with her but they weren't they were they ended, over they they weren't they weren't brought over here they they was um they were um in hospital in pakistan they weren't brought over here to be otherwise they wouldn't have gone back no, no but they came um, over here afterwards didn't they to college yeah yeah oh, did they? the other two yeah right. yeah the two girls uh, that got shot came over they? to college but when when they was when they were both shot, they didn't come. They didn't get shipped over here to get treatment. They, they weren't as bad, were they? Yeah, they? that's right. So they didn't. You know, she they, as she said they were treated in Pakistan. She came over here, mm. and what have you. And then it was like it was like what happened when, as she said, when her her family's far away and she's on her own and she's got all that time to think. And she said, oh, she's got a clock on the wall that's ticking, but she can't make out exactly what's happening. Um, and she kept on, she was saying that she drifted in and out of sleep, but she couldn't close her eyes because one of her eyes wouldn't close. So she'd always have daylight. She couldn't rest very well, so she struggled a lot. But yeah, I mean, to get to the end of the book, I'm absolutely so pleased. I, I stuck with it and read it and found it so enjoyable to read and powerful from a young girl, from her words, from her perspective. Um, yeah, very inspiring young lady. Mm. Hi, I'm Namala. Have you got to the end? So I haven't finished it yet. I've just 